the goal that uh, that I have, uh, should the you know everything uh, come to fruition with with Twitter, is uh, to I have a, a, a service that is broadly as broadly inclusive as possible, um, where ideally uh, most of America is, is on it and, and talking. I've also vowed this publicly that we, we have to get rid of the bots and trolls and the scams and everything, because that's obviously uh, diminishing the user experience. Hello and welcome to another episode of Make Money Online. So what is this Elon Musk big warning? As we already know, the billionaire investor had long harbored so much bad blood against the U.S. financial regulators, the SEC. And as the world's richest man continues to champion a subtle campaign against the SEC for its irregular regulatory framework, this all started when the world's richest man came under fire after tweeting that his company Tesla was considering going private, and the SEC charged him with fraud back in 2018, and he was fined about $20 million. A feud that cost Musk an original settlement of not only that civil penalty, but also cost him his position as chairman of Tesla's board. This was two years earlier before the SEC probing Ripple, which makes it clear that this isn't a coordinated effort between Elon Musk and the XRP community. But ever since, the tech genius and arguably the most influential man on the planet has never shied away from calling out the SEC at every opportunity he gets. The memes and satirical entries that followed suit are even more interesting, given this trend, and netizens and Twitter sleuths continue to dig deeper producing these comical examples. But we've got some quite exciting news for today. Just as Bitcoin dips to $30,000 for the first time in years, and as we're experiencing those reds all across the market... <laughs> Look at you. No, I, 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 I want to I be clear. I do not respect the SEC. I do not respect them. Does this warning or hint by Elon Musk regarding the SEC indicate some quotes that we might liken to XRP, or maybe not? For now, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications as well, but on to the video proper. Back to this Elon Musk tweet, we see how the billionaire investor and world's richest man had, just like in the past, posted cipher tweets regarding a particular coin that would likely become the currency of the future. I know members of the XRP community would love to have Elon Musk joining forces with Ripple in the fight against the SEC. But before we get into that, let's take a look at a couple of tweets within the asset class. Like this one here, Justin, president of El Salvador, reveals the layout for Bitcoin City. Guys, if we take a close look at the images posted with those tweets, we see that the nation of El Salvador has already leaped further into the creation of its Bitcoin settings, as their president, Nayib Bukele, as you can see him right there with the uh, white hat, is standing next to a mock-up of the projected city dedicated to the flagship cryptocurrency by a group of architects. El Salvador is indeed small compared to other countries in the Americas, but its crypto landscape has been rapidly growing since its government announced that it would replace the dollar with Bitcoin as its official currency. Not long after, and under the leadership of Nayib Bukele, the seemingly small Central American nation has continued to make giant strides in that regard. As this one tweet from the president, El Salvador just bought the dip, 500 coins, at an average price of $30,744. This seemingly ordinary nation has registered itself on the world map as the first country to announce a digital currency, Bitcoin, as its legal tender. Now onto the following tweet, we see pioneers of the Terra Luna project doing their community dirty, as this one here says, Terra's Luna dives 45% after the network stablecoin lost its dollar peg again, adding to the pressure on Bitcoin. As the team behind this project has projected that they would be selling a portion of their Bitcoin to prop up its USD again, the price of Luna crashed by 45%. Meanwhile, El Salvador buys into the dip. The Luna Project team empties their Bitcoin reserve wallet worth $1.4 billion, and as Bitcoin went down to $30,000, reaching below the $29,000 support, Terra Luna was caught going down by 32%. At the time of recording, Terra USD was down 95 cents after having tasted a price range of about 90 cents during the hours when news of the Luna Foundation dumping their Bitcoin reserve hit the scene. So guys, this is kind of shocking news. Did the Terra team pull a fast one? Unfortunately, the facts say just that. In less than 24 hours, the Luna team has been making big moves through its transfer of large swaths of Bitcoin, supposedly moved from its Bitcoin reserve addresses to a wallet address on the OKX exchange platform. Of course, this is terrible news, as it does spell doom to heavy investors in this project. 
However, the links provided in those tweets, we can see proof of said transactions or transactions alongside tracking the wallet addresses involved in this scheme. So what's the Terra team all about? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But back to today's topic, as we just might be having a break there, this article from Reuters by Hyun Ju Jin and Sheila Dang highlights Musk's recent comments regarding his past encounter with the SEC, which reads, Musk says US SEC bastards force settlement over Tesla tweets. And if we scroll down a little, here's a picture of Elon Musk. Tesla CEO Elon Musk leaves Manhattan federal court after a hearing on his fraud settlement with the Securities and Exchange Commission in New York City, April 4th, 2019. Tesla CEO Elon Musk on Thursday stepped up criticism of the U.S. securities regulator, calling the Securities and Exchange Commission officials bastards for bringing fraud charges against him over his 2018 tweets regarding taking the company private. On the day, he made significant news by unveiling a $43 billion cash takeover offer for social media company Twitter. Musk aired his grievances toward the SEC during remarks at the TED conference in Vancouver. Musk, the world's richest person, according to a Forbes tally, said funding to take his electric car company private was secured at the time he posted his tweets, but the agency pursued the active public investigation nonetheless. With that in mind, you might want to ask, would this be the case with the Ripple and SEC lawsuit? Would the SEC force settlement on Ripple just like it did with Elon Musk back in the day? What does it say for Ripple and XRP afterward, if that be the case? In my opinion, should Ripple eventually agree to a settlement with the SEC? I think Ripple would mostly feel the brunt of it at first, as they might have to pay a fine, most likely a significant portion of the $1.3 billion which the SEC alleged that Ripple made through the sale of its unregistered securities. But in the long run, Ripple would become the most clearly defined digital currency to be traded on the US securities, stock, or crypto markets, as the case may be, and especially in the US, where financial regulators' clarity is yet to be attained. But let us listen to the words of this expert litigator, attorney Jeremy Hogan in a tweet post from late last year that highlights the various do's and don'ts with that. Then, of course, what is to be expected, the boxes to be ticked and those to be unticked, should a settlement be reached or forced on Ripple. So, the SEC regulates companies in the U.S. by something called selective enforcement. The SEC can't sue every market participant involved in violations of securities laws, so it files select lawsuits on issues that will send a message to other market participants. That's the idea. It's like being a parent. You, you randomly spank one of your kids for doing what all the others are doing, just to keep them in line. Looking at this chart, you can see the number of crypto-related lawsuits filed by the SEC really picked up in 2018. What we are looking at is the pastel green-blue color, and those are lawsuits filed. And you can see in all of 2020, 17 crypto lawsuits were filed of various types. Some were fraud, some were very small coins. The big one, of course, was the Ripple lawsuit. But the truth is that most of the companies or individuals that were sued either threw their hands up and said, got me and consented to judgment or fought the charges but quickly realized they were going to be ran into the ground and they couldn't afford the millions of dollars that it would take to fight the lawsuits. Or in some other cases, the SEC was able to get a judge to sign what's called an emergency injunction, which essentially freezes your bank account and makes it impossible for you to fight because you have no money. So, we really only have a handful of examples as far as settlements and none of them from a company in the position Ripple is in currently. In fact, the only companies that really had the resources to fight were Telegram and Kick Interactive and they ended up losing. Now, once they lost that summary judgment, Kick Interactive smartly used whatever bargaining power it had left to agree to terms with the SEC. But by that time, Kick had kind of the same bargaining power that Hirohito had with the Americans at the end of the World War II not much. So the judgment in the kick case was essentially in three parts and let's take a quick look at it. The first part is Roman number one and it says that quote the defendant is permanently restrained and enjoined from violating section 5 of the Securities Act etc etc. Now I laughed when I read this because it's basically saying kick is enjoined from breaking the law again which is just kind of silly so I assume that's something that the SEC insists on for some reason. Now the second part of the judgment which is Roman numeral 2 was more interesting. It requires kick to give the SEC 45 days notice before selling any more of the kin coins. But even more interesting is this, quote, nothing in this paragraph requires defendant to provide the commission with any information beyond the notice. Notice what the judgment does not say. It does not say that the kin coin is a security. It does not say that kick 
could not sell more Kim coins. Now, why is that? Because the coins themselves are not inherently securities or not securities. If that was not true, the language in the judgment would make no sense. So Kik was able to negotiate that language that would essentially allow it to sell the Kin coin even after the judgment. And in fact, the Kin coin was and is still sold on many exchanges and no one else to my knowledge has been sued or gotten in trouble for it. And finally, the third part of the judgment was a penalty or fine of $5 million and it was paid to the state. And I believe those are the funds the SEC uses to operate. So, quote, defendant shall satisfy the obligation by paying $5 million to the SEC within 30 days. And of note, in the Kick Interactive case, there was no disgorgement of money from Kick Interactive with the money to be returned to investors. This sets it apart from, for example, the Telegram case in which the company had all monies disgorged to the tune of $1.2 billion and a fund was set up for purchasers to recover some of their investments. So that is what we have to work with, just a handful of consent judgments, none of them really analogous to what's going on with Ripple. But that's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out the other videos on our channel. Leave us a like on this video and drop us a comment. And of course, as always, we'll see you in the next video.